Hi all, on the bench today, I've got a Coria Gladiator 23 channel AM SSB radio from the mid 1970s, 76 to 78. This is the 858 board. Um, yeah, look at the quality in this. They don't make radios like this anymore, that's for sure. And there's a reason why, because of how much they cost to make. So what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to clean up um, some scratchy pots uh, with this stuff, the Oxit 5, D5, really good, really good uh, cleaner, pot cleaner, um, yeah, because when you turn them on, the radio on, you know, you get that scratchy noise, um, usually it's a dirty contacts inside the pot, so we're going to give that a spray and uh, clean them up, uh, so what I've done, I've obviously taken the covers off first, and I just wanted to show you something that I noticed um, straight away. I just wanted to have a look under the speaker and um, I went to undo some screws on the sides here and I just realised, well, I didn't really need to undo all of them. I just undid the front two, front two uh, screws here. Now have a, look at it. have a look at this for quality. It doesn't get any better than that. You know, look at that, hinging off its own screws. Oh, sorry about the noise in the background. That's uh, somebody obviously tuning up. Yeah, so have a look at the board inside. Um, in beautiful condition. Um, you know, the wiring's all done properly. Um, the board's beautifully clean. I've looked at all, most of the caps previously. Everything's good. Uh, crystals are great. Um, now, I would assume under here would be the uh, chip. I haven't opened up one of these, but I've got a fair idea if I can get this little bugger. Oh, no. No, it's uh, got tape on it, so I won't have to, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll leave that the way it is. Um, I don't need to go in there to have a look. I've got a fair idea what's in there anyway. Uh, what a great board these are. Beautiful. A little quality in there. Yep, they don't make them like they used to. Probably a bit like everything else. Yep. Um, I just wanted to check it for any dry solder joints or anything like that. What I usually do, I get my little faithful paintbrush out and give it a quick wipe over on the board. Um, yeah, but there's no problem with anything in there. The radio works fine. Um, I don't really need to clean it at all. But what I do need to clean there's some scratchy pots. Now, there's a couple of ways I could do this. I could pull the um, uh, front bezel off um, and get into them fairly easily, but I don't really need to do that today. It's not such a big issue. Um, but you'll notice that down on, I don't know if you can see it down on the pots, if I can point out, there's uh, these little, like, little breather type holes. I assume it's part of the casting for whatever reason and um, that's what I'll usually uh, use the end of this for uh, to get in there so all we basically do um, I just give it a short sharp spray through that that hole there and all I do is then work the pot back and forward and you'll notice as you're doing that it'll start to get a lot easier uh, freer and freer and freer. So some of these, radio, you know, this radio is 40 plus years old. Couldn't have been used. Probably, it may not have been used for 20 years, 30 years. And it's just been sitting dormant after a while, like everything. Um, sort of, if it doesn't get used, it'll uh, freeze up a bit. So I'll also give the uh, switches a bit of a spray as well. Won't hurt. Um, the Oxit uh, is designed for this specific application. Um, I turn around to the other side of the board. I can see some pots there. I can get it into them fairly easy with uh, like the uh, tube applicator. Give it a quick spray. Uh, one more just slipped off a bit. It's always a bit tricky. Um, yeah, I think that's done it. I'll get get one in here as well. I don't know if you can see that. I oh, know it's a, sorry about that, but it's a bit tricky. But you can get inside the different pots. Uh, Give them a quick spray. You don't have to soak it. You don't have to drown them or anything like that. And then just give them a quick work over. Now, I can feel that one already. Um, 
What's that one? It's the uh, volume, and that was the one that was giving me the most drama. The the volume. Uh, oh, that's freed up straight away. That is bloody fantastic. That was the one that was causing me the most amount of grief. Obviously, the volume, as everyone would know. Uh, make sure I get this around the right way. Oh, that's uh, yeah, giving that a quick spray, and that's made a huge difference already. Um, make sure that all the others are done. Um, mode switch is all right. Let's have a look at the squelch. Don't really use the squelch a lot. Probably give that one another go. Sometimes, you know, they, they, um, they, they're made, they're made fairly tight. But the main thing is to get any scratches and out of it, uh, clean up all the contacts inside the potentiometer. Yeah, that word. And, um, yeah, no, that's worked really well. I couldn't be happy with that now. That, that volume is freed up beautifully. Um, just a quick look over the, the rest of the radio. Um, yeah, it's in good nick. Um, I'll just hinge that back. Just quickly uh, do these screws up and uh, yeah, that's it. Um, done. I don't, I'm not going to do anything else to this radio. doesn't need anything else. You know, it needs a bit of a clean up. Um, I think the meter's a bit sticky. The meter's in these always um, a bit of a mission to get to down in there. Sorry about the camera work. Um, I might try, uh, I've got to take the whole thing apart to get into it. You know, sticky meters on all radios are always a bit of a, bit of a problem, but, um, yeah, pretty happy with this one now. Um, deoxidated, um, the board looks nice and clean. I don't have to use any cl board cleaner. Um, everything seems to be fine on it. Um, the board itself is in brilliant condition. There's no dust or any... Anything for me to worry about. Look at the wiring. The way they look at the way the wiring's done. Bloody incredible. Mm. Um, yeah, they don't make radios like this anymore for a reason. Whoops. They don't make radios like this for a reason, and uh, that's because they cost too much money to make. Um, the the soldering, uh, the the PCB, it's bloody thick. Look at the thickness of the PCB and the quality of the solder. Um, this is. Uh, this was, uh, yeah, quality. Um, speaker, nice big speaker. Uh, audio sounds really good. Um, these radios didn't have a mic gain. They were preset from the factory. Um, they, they, there would be an adjustment in there somewhere. Um, you could look at them up online and uh, if you wanted a bit more modulation. But I've heard these radios stock out of, uh, uh, out of the box and... They sound bloody great. You know, they've just got a normal every day. The, the famous Courier Spartan speaker um, with the headphone type jack, uh, mic jack. Um, yeah, just so sort of strange why some people, some manufacturers went for that design and the others went for four pin. And yeah, it's just weird the way they did it. Um, this one came with uh, uh, the mount bracket as well. And somewhere around here, um, as well, excuse me, this is always really good to have. It actually came with the original manual. Um, yeah, incredible. It's got, yeah, the original manual. And I've, I've never even looked at this. This is the first time it's been taken out by me. Um, so you've got the instruction manual, um, a sticker on the back. Um, look at this. Uh, transmitter identification card. Sorry about the camera right there transmitter identification card hopefully you can read that um, the manual itself um, with a schematic um, showed you everything about the radio in the day um, yeah we also got the warranty card um, I think that's probably no good anymore uh, what else have we got in here um, application for a radio license uh, yeah what else have we got in here? Oh, look at this. The original Courier sticker. How good is that? Wow. Probably, look at that. Probably a little bit funny now, but hey, it's been sitting in a plastic bag for 40 odd years. So would I be. Um, courier authorised warranty service centres. Karakis. I'd hate to see the list of people. Uh, this one's obviously come out of the States, been a uh, look at all look at all these oh well obviously 
in America, as we know, CB radio is huge. I can't believe how many places. Look at all the CB radio places that used to probably sell radios. There's pages of them. Yeah, it was huge in America, wasn't it? Um, huge here as well. Um, but in America, that's where it really started. I think it started in the late 1960s or maybe even earlier with um, pirate radios. Uh, yeah, no, I'll put that away shortly. Have a look at that. It's always interesting. Okay, so um, yeah, there's a Courier Spartan um, 23 channel radio. Um, that's ready to rock and roll. I'll probably give this a run a bit later. Um, just have it sitting on uh, probably uh, 16 lower side here in Australia. Obviously, I can't get to 35, but 16 lower side um, seems to have a fair bit of activity on it um, from time to time during the day uh, when skip conditions are right. And um, yeah, I'll probably get a few radio audio reports, have a bit of a rag chew and um, see how we go. All right. Thanks for watching my videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Uh, give me the thumbs up, leave some comments. And um, I'll be back with another video hopefully soon. 73s for now.